Hi, I'm Bob Beggs, and welcome to the American Helicopter Museum and Education Center. Few people know that the Delaware Valley is the birthplace of rotary wing aviation in the United States, and this museum was established to celebrate exactly that. It all began with Harold Pitcairn, who brought the first rotating wing aircraft to the United States in 1928. He brought it over from Spain. It was a Sierra C8 autogyro. Now the autogyros were different. They preceded the helicopters. The autogyros rotors were not powered by the engine. They were powered by air flowing through the rotors as the aircraft moved through the air. In fact, the aircraft were called the windmill planes. Harold Pitcairn brought that aircraft over because he wanted to fly mail along the East Coast. But there weren't many airports in those days, and so he needed an aircraft that could land without a runway. And so here's Harold. There's an example of an autogyro that he uh, brought to the U.S., and for 10 years he developed that technology into a very sophisticated aircraft. That launched an entire industry that survived for over a decade, from the late 1920s to the to the early 1940s, and then they were taken over by the helicopters. This exhibit at the American Helicopter Museum celebrates the pioneers of the industry. And you'll see that helicopter history took place over many areas in the Philadelphia region. You have pioneers like Harold Pitcairn and Burke Wilford, Wallace and Rod Kellett, Here's a picture of an autogyro that's flying from the Philadelphia Post Office delivering mail over to Camden, New Jersey. E. Burke Wilford developed the first autogyro that could actually control its rotors. And that was critical because it's the control of the rotors that ultimately enabled a helicopter to be invented. One of the most important events was at the Franklin Institute in 1938. It was the first time that the men who were experimenting with this new concept of flight, of rotating their wings, got together at the Institute. In that room were all those early developers. There were folks from Europe and the U.S. The outgrowth of that meeting really was the creation of the helicopter. The helicopter was the outgrowth of the autogyro. And Frank Piasecki, a Philadelphia native, is the man credited with developing the second successful helicopter in the U.S. Igor Sikorsky is credited with the first successful helicopter, Frank Piasecki, the second. He went on to develop tandem rotor helicopters. He's known as the grandfather of tandem rotor helicopters, and we'll see those later. A tandem rotor helicopter has two big rotors. That, that spin in opposite directions. Following Frank, there were a series of helicopter developments in this area. You have uh, Jovanovich, Kirchgen, Lawrence Lepage, and Haviland Platt developing aircraft, and Arthur Young, who actually ha is credited with developing the first Bell helicopter, lived right here in the Delaware Valley. That legacy of rotary wing development continues today. We have Piasecki aircraft, we have Boeing rotorcraft, we have Sikorsky Global, and we have Leonardo helicopters all operating today in this region, developing and introducing new aircraft into the market. So this is still a hotbed of helicopter development in the entire world. This is Pioneer Hall at the American Helicopter Museum and Education Center. This is where we celebrate the very earliest days of helicopter development. The early rotary wing concepts, the, the flivers, the, the, the ideas that people had to fly vertically, to be able to lift off directly from the ground are, are highlighted here. This exhibit is very important because Juan de la Sierra had developed a, a successful autogyro in Spain and uh, the Pitcairns brought that one of those aircraft back here to the U.S. with the license rights to, to build them here. And we actually have on display a slide rule that was owned by Juan de la Sierra. 
It's a very unique exhibit. Now, the younger folks in the audience may not know what a slide row is. Today, we use calculators and computers. But in, in the earlier days, in the 1920s and 1930s and beyond, people used slide rules to do the sophisticated mathematics that were required to engineer helicopters and autogyros. This exhibit contains some important artifacts of the early days of rotary wing development in the United States. We, we look at the Pitcairn family as the group that brought the first, Harold Pitcairn brought the first autogyro to the U.S. And in this exhibit, you'll see some of the actually early elements of those aircraft. Here's a picture of the design. This is one of the engineering uh, diagrams of the design of an early autogyro. This is actually a piece of fabric. The early aircraft weren't metal like they are today or composite. Instead, they were actually fabric over wood. And this is a piece of fabric from an early Pitcairn autogyro. Now up on the wall here, we actually have a photograph of a Pitcairn autogyro flying over the city. And, and you can see these large rotors over this aircraft. And again, those rotors weren't powered by the engine at all. They were powered by air flowing over them like a giant windmill. That enabled that aircraft to land on a spot. And over here, we see the, actually the Pitcairn family property. This is the Bryn Athen Cathedral. Bryn Athen was the home of the Pitcairns. And you see here an early Sierra Autogyro flying over their property uh, there in Bryn Athen, Pennsylvania. The Collier Trophy is awarded annually for the greatest achievement in aviation in America. And Harold Pitcairn, who, de who developed the autogyro here in the U.S., was given that award in 1930. It's an important award, and this is actually the one that he was given. The actual Collier Trophy is currently at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., and, and companies and people are still, once a year, awarded that award. But this was his personal uh, copy of that award. It's probably one of the unique and most valuable assets we have in the museum because it recognized the important contribution of the Pitcairns to the development of rotary wing aviation in the United States. This is a CH-46 Sea Knight, affectionately known by the U.S. Marine Corps as the Frog. It's a medium lift aircraft, and it was used to transport Marines all over the world. And you can see inside the configuration of this aircraft has litters on the right and troop seats on the left. It was an aircraft that was used for multi-missions and really was a favorite of the U.S. Marine Corps. The early pioneers of helicopter development dreamt that everyone would have a helicopter in their own garage. Nowadays, that's possible with kit-built helicopters. These are aircraft that you can build in your garage. And there's organizations like the Popular Rotorcraft Association and the Experimental Aircraft Association that help builders develop their own aircraft. I'm climbing into a Scorpion. This is developed by Rotorway International. And this is an aircraft that you can build in your garage. And once you have it built, you can climb in and take off. Thanks for joining me on this tour of the American Helicopter Museum and Education Center. And please come back and visit, bring your family. This is an interactive place. This is a place where kids can climb into helicopters and experience flight. And if you come on a weekend that we offer helicopter rides, you'll have the opportunity to actually fly in a helicopter. It's a place where we preserve history, where we educate, and we inspire future generations. Just check out our website if you need to know more. Thank you very much for visiting with us. <laughs>